thank you for coming along. Um, as someone said, my name is Jim James. Um, I'm a senior international trade advisor for the creative and media sector uh, for UK trade and investment. I'll just give you a very brief overview of what UK trade and investment is all about. Needless to say, our principal objective is to help British companies do more business overseas. The government's ambitions by 2020, as you can see, um, are to be at £1 trillion in exports. Um, that figure of £550 billion at the moment is slightly out of date, is now over £600 billion. Um, the additional 100,000 companies that we're hoping to start exporting is on top of the 188,000 who were already exporting six years ago. Uh, the running figure at the moment is about 226,000, so we're moving in the right direction and we want more British companies to be exporting uh, by 2020. So that's our ambition overall. Um, fairly obvious question, but why is exporting important? Exporting is great. Inevitably, with a lot more countries involved, there's a lot more opportunity um, for more customers. Um, Exporting gives you the opportunity to take your ideas internationally. Um, it might not be a new idea in the UK, but something which hasn't worked in the UK or something which has been tried and tested and done and moved on, it might still be a new idea to an international market. Exporting also gives the opportunity to engage with new partners uh, and to gain more experience which can then be carried over to other countries as well. Um, less competition and risk is a slightly misleading comment. It doesn't mean that there's less competition because the world's a big place and there's an awful lot of companies out there, all of whom are potential competitors. Um, but it's a different type of competition and it's a different type of risk that you experience overseas. You've also got more opportunity to manage that competition and that risk. Um, you'll find exporting an awful lot uh, more in terms of receptive markets. Again, it goes back to uh, something that you've done in the UK, you can do it overseas, they'll be receptive to ideas. The UK is in demand, I'll, I'll come on to that. But overseas markets are looking for what you have to sell. Better cash flow and improved profits, again, um, it's not just about simplifying cash flow. People are used to paying in advance uh, for imported goods, and so when you export, you get paid in advance. That does help for cash flow. Um, there's also the opportunity for higher margins um, with export, so that's where the better cash flow and improved profits come from. Um, all of which means you've got an opportunity to stay ahead of the competition. Um, just talking about the creative and media sector in the UK overall, 71 million pounds annually, and that figure is increasing all the time. One and a half million people employed directly or indirectly, that figure is also increasing all the time. It makes the point that the creative sector is a very valuable sector to the UK economy. It's growing um, when some other sectors are in decline. Uh, publishing is a part of it, and it's a very important part of it. And your um, part of a sector that the world wants. People are looking to UK creativity. Um, the UK is an easy place to do business. Um, so you've got the content, you've got the services and the programs, the world is looking in the world. If I can just look at one sector of uh, publishing, the digital sector is currently worth 4.3 billion. Um, I'm not sure what that graph would have looked like 10 years ago, but I'm guessing that the purple bit might have been about that big. And who's to say what it's going to look like in 10 years' time? One of the key things about uh, this statistic is digital is growing, it's going to keep on growing. In the case of publishing, digital means it's a hell of a lot easier to export. There's a lot less, um, well, you don't have to ship something, you can just email it straight over. Um, it makes it a lot easier, so there is um, a new opportunity there. Uh, 
another wonderful graph. I think what this tells us is that um, the UK is recognised around the world um, for its expertise in publishing. Um, you can make a graph look good for absolutely anything, but I think the message is the UK wouldn't publish this many books if we weren't any good at it. And the world knows that we're good at it, and this is an opportunity for you to take advantage of it. Um, so moving on to what we can do to help. You know what your product or your service or your offering is. Our job is to help you, to start with, to choose your market. This is an example of the sort of information that we've got access to, and our international trade advisors can help you decipher the important bits of that information. Just picking up on one or two bits in there, um, the biggest sector is the rest of the world. Um, the USA is an important market for UK book exports. The second biggest market is foreign language. Um, the fifth, sixth and seventh of all foreign language, so language isn't necessarily a barrier to the content that's being created here. Um, in terms of where to export to, um, how to decide where you're trying to export to will help you decide on the criteria that's important to you. Market potential is important, but it's not quite as simple as whether it's easy or difficult to enter. Um, we try and narrow it down working with you to identify whether the market you're looking at is growing or declining. Um, in some sectors it might be declining, in other sectors it might be growing. Uh, is the market ready for the product that you've got? Um, it's no good trying to sell a digital book to a country where they've got very low connectivity. Um, what are the demographic, demographics of the population? If everything that you sell is aimed at uh, very young children in education, you don't want to sell it to a market which has got a very ageing population and vice versa. Um, Somewhere like India, something like 30% of the population are under the age of 20 and say, tailor what you're doing to the demographics of the population. GDP is clearly important. Um, the bigger countries aren't necessarily the ones with the most money to spend. Legislation, particularly in something like media and publishing, there might be restrictions on what you can sell um, and how you can sell it. Um, there might be barriers to entry that you just physically can't get past because of the laws, but we can help you try and not get around the law, but understand the opportunities that exist um, and take advantage of them. Um, as the last, shide, last slide showed, language isn't necessarily a barrier to entry, but it can be. Um, culture also, um, and I can add on to that, religion are areas that you need to be careful of. We have language and culture advisors um, who can work with you and make sure that um, you don't make any um, faux pas uh, that often get made in the world of export. We can help you navigate that one. Um, the distance and the cost of access, I think distance is probably the most relevant one and in terms of selecting markets, it's sometimes uh, not the best idea to pick the biggest markets. Um, the USA and China might be big markets but one is about nine hours that way and the other is nine hours and so if you're sitting in the middle of it, you probably won't get any sleep. Um, so just thinking about the markets that you're looking at and then prioritising how you approach each of those markets. Um, obvious question, who are your existing contacts? Who are you already dealing with in those markets? Uh, existing contacts are a very good place to start. They might not necessarily be people that you're going to sell to immediately, but they probably know something that you don't know and so take advantage of the contacts that you've got. Um, we also take advantage of the contacts that we've got and we can pass on that sort of information to companies that we're working with. Just so just building on what I was just saying about the contacts, uh, an awful lot of what we do at UKTI um, is designed around um, the international trade advisors who work with you, the, uh, the companies. We build programs uh, and services that are uh, tailored purely to your business. 
the international trade advisors, I'm one of them. Uh, we mostly come from commercial backgrounds. We've got real experience. I lived in India and China for a long time. I used to work in publishing. I make that experience and those contacts available to the companies that I work with. Similarly, um, the other colleagues in the UKTI, they've all got different backgrounds, um, but mostly from the commercial sector. Most of us have got 20 or 30 years experience behind us, um, and we work with you to try and make the most of that. Um, I don't know, you probably can't see written in uh, white at the bottom. Um, is the number of trade advisors that we've got in the UK, the number of trade advisors that we've got around the world, um, and the network um, that we have available to us. If I don't know someone or one of my colleagues doesn't know someone in your chosen market, um, that slide, lots and lots of dots all over the world, that's where we've got our offices. We have got contacts and uh, representation in pretty much every country that you can think of. that website. Um, there are a lot of government websites and I urge you to take advantage of those. If you go onto the websites you can sign up to receive business opportunities. Once in a while, I can't guarantee this is every week, but occasionally you get a business opportunity comes up. This is a real opportunity that came up um, I think in the middle of last year. Simple as that. British publishing house sought by a Chinese company. I don't know how much money was attached to it, but that that um, website got an awful lot of clicks on it. Um, these sort of leads come from, if I just go back, our offices around the world, all of them are plugged into the local business communities. They know what's going on, they hear about opportunities, and when they hear the opportunities, they make them available um, through news alerts and business opportunities like that. We also help in other ways, giving people the opportunity to attend book fairs around the world, um, such as the Beijing International Book Fair. Uh, we have a thing called the Trade Show Access Program, which, believe it or not, is a program that gives you access to trade shows. Um, we try and keep things simple. There's a financial grant which is available to people who are exhibiting in book fairs. Uh, not every book fair, but some of them. Um, we work very closely with the Publishers Association. Um, as we're doing at this book, show, uh, book fair. Um, we also have our offices around the world who get plugged into um, the big book fair. So uh, you mentioned Frankfurt there, it was the same in Mexico last year at the Guadalajara book fair, and I'm sure that we'll be at Guadalajara and the other major book fairs again uh, this year. Um, make the most of your trade show. And have a look on the Gov website, the British government website, gov.uk, for information about the trade show access program. Um, this next slide, um, I couldn't draw something like that, um, but the idea of it is to say that e-commerce is an important part of what we're doing. Um, digital publishing, which I mentioned earlier, is a huge growth opportunity, and e-commerce is one of the ways that it's being delivered. Um, UK Trade and Investment has now got dedicated e-commerce trade advisors who will be able to talk you through very complicated flow diagrams like that um, and hopefully take advantage of the, the, the pound sign at the bottom. Um, next week, exporting is great week. Um, you might have seen some information about that. Um, being advertised again, it's on the Gov website. Just to give you a brief outline of some of the things that we're doing in London. Um, there we go. If you have a look at exportweek.uktigov.uk, there'll be lots of information about all the events that are going on. Most of the events are free to attend, but you would need to register in advance. Some of them are paid for, but I'm assured that they are um, heavily subsidised or discounted. There are events like um, Exporting is Great Week or Explore Export. Um, or exporting opportunity um, your potential, um, or your export potential even. Um, there's lots of these things going on all of the time, so I encourage you to um, have a look at our website, see what's going on, and take advantage. Um, and that's the last slide. So that's me, and that's a very brief overview of what we do. But in very simple terms, we're from the government, we're here to help. 
So please come and speak to us.